Hello everyone, welcome back. I hope you guys are doing fine. Today we'll see how to insert VFX to this type of eye sequence. Using this technique, you can add anything to your video. Could be any icon or image or video, anything you can imagine. So let's start. At first, we need a video. So let's drag this one. We don't need this audio, so we can remove that. Let's select the footage and press Shift 5 to navigate to the Fusion page. As you can notice already, the bottom navigation menu is hidden in my PC because I used to turn off the show page navigation setting. So in your case, you can just select the footage, click on the Fusion page. That will work too. I don't like the bottom navigation menu, so I'm going to hide the navigation menu and I will be switching to edit and color page using the shortcut. Let's track the footage and for that we need a tool that is called tracker. By default the tracker will come up with IntelliTrack. I'm going to remove the IntelliTrack and add a point track. Move the tracker to appropriate position, the one where you want to track. Let's connect the media in out to tracker input. I'm going to press 1 to see the result on my left screen. Everything is set up correctly. Let's track forward. Since the eye is blinking, so there will be a problem in a moment. And you can see the problem started. And let's stop the tracking. If you analyze the footage, you can see around 85 to 90. The eye blinking is happening. So there is not enough information to track. So we'll be keeping the good result and remove the rest. Let's open the spline window. Spline is the timeline of the Vinci Fusion. Switch on the animated properties to see the graph. And you can see around here the, the tracking properties jumped quite a bit. And I think we should remove this one because these are not the good result. So let's remove these keys one by one. If you struggle to find the actual keyframe correctly, you can use this button to zoom to fit so that you can see the individual animated keys clearly. Since the eye gonna blink around 85 to 100 frame I guess. So let's drag the time scrubber one frame at a time and find out a position from where we can start tracking again. And let's drag the tracker position to the previous position. I actually forgot where it was placed earlier. We can just track one single frame using this button and that will be our reference point to correct the position with the earlier position. We cannot check the previous frame and as you can see it was placed actually here. So we can take a screenshot and store the screenshot in PureRef. This is a great software to store any screenshot and check for the reference. I'm going to drag my pure rep to my second screen and I'll try my best to match the tracker position with the earlier position that we tracked before. Here you can see my current tracking position is almost similar to the previous tracking position and I'm happy with this result. and. With that said, let's track forward again. Give it some time to track the whole thing. Depends on your PC configuration, it might take some time. And once done, you can see keyframe is quite good now. The initial keyframe that we have set is not looking that correct according to the other keyframes. So let me remove those two. And from here, we can track one frame at a time using this button and check and correct the position manually so that we can have more information on the tracker which will help us to position any media object to it later. So I'm trying to actually show you the process of how to do the tracking of this type of critical footage where tracking information is lost due to the footage condition or shooting condition. You have to adapt on your own and manually track each keyframe. if this type of problem arises. Tracking critical footage like this is always fun and I guess tedious too but it is more rewarding once you completed the task and you will feel more 
confident to track any type of footage that feels almost impossible to track and as you can see i'm still removing keyframe and adding keyframe uh, trying to match my best with the pattern that we started tracking and from here i think the tracking information is completely lost and we cannot do anything here it is just couple of frames i think one uh, five or ten maybe for this demonstration i think i can skip this part in real life you have to add all those keyframes so that it won't be noticeable to the audiences let's start adding media to the tracking position i'm going to use this da vinci logo to appear on the top of our eye if you notice carefully the green input of the tracker is the foreground input so we can drag da vinci logo output to the tracker foreground input and nothing happened it is not working because we have to navigate to the operation and change the operation to match move and you can see the result is appearing on our left screen let's play the animation and see if there is any problem or not the media out node is displaying the result on the second screen but we cannot see the result on the second screen because we have to drag the tracker output to the media out input now the media out is displaying the correct result the icon is not matching the perspective of the eye so we have to add a tool after the media which is called corner positioner drag all the position to match the perspective of the eye let's hide the spline it is taking much more valuable space the icon is not blending correctly navigate to operation let's change the apply mode you can just click once and press up and down arrow to change between all the options in my case the screen looks good so i'm going to keep the screen now the question is the icon is not placed correctly on the center of the eye so we have to add one transform node after the media now using the transform tool we can adjust the position and match with our footage now for the next step we have to mask the upper lid of the eye because the eye is blinking in the middle so let's add a tool which is called magic mask and connect the media out to mask input since the icon will be visible only the center area of the eye so i'm going to mask out everything except the eye with the mask tool selected you can just drag a stroke this will act as addition of the mask and if you want to remove anything you can press and hold alt key draw a stroke to avoid the specific area once you are confident about the strokes we have to track in this case i'm going to track back once the track back is complete let's track forward before that i can activate track forward and reverse button this button will help track automatically forward or backward depend on your situation as you can see our mask is pretty good in the first run since i cannot notice any glitching on the mask so i'm going to proceed to the next step the mask we have generated just now will be used to mask the icon we can use the mask on the tracker node itself if you noticed there is an effect mask on the tracker is already exist so we can use our magic mask to mask out the tracker node I'm going to set the time head in a way where we can see the result of masking. Now grab the magic mask out to track our effect mask input. And you can see the result is visible on the second screen. Though we don't want this type of mask, we have to invert the mask. Now if you play the animation, you can see the masking is correct, but it is not as realistic as expected mostly because the mask is too sharp so we have to soften the edge of the mask to take control over the mask we need a couple of tools the first tool that we need is bitmap tool the bitmap tool will take any input as image and convert that to black and white image based on the alpha information of input image now we can soften the black and white image without affecting the mask as you can see here when i'm increasing the value of soft edge the border of the image is also get softened but this is not what we want so we need another tool which is called matte control so let's drag our output to matte control input matte control for more sophisticated setting to control the mask as you can see 
when I'm increasing the blur, it is only affecting the white part of the mask. If we increase the value of soft edge on the bitmap tool, it will affect the whole image. So now we can use our matte control output as the input of the tracker mask. And you can see the result is pretty convincing now. Now let's play the animation and see if the result is actually convincing or if we need any more improvement or not. If we think that more improvement is required, we can navigate to match control and increase the contract or expand setting or increase or decrease the blur value too. As you can see here, I am trying to adjust the blur and contact expand value to find out a sweet position to match the shadow of the upper lid of the eye. Let's play and check if the result is good. I think I'm convinced with the result. Now let's move on to the next step. How quickly we can change the media. It could be image or video or anything. I'm going to rearrange my tool so that we can quickly change any media. We can start with image. I'm going to grab a couple of image that we can quickly change. Let's drag the output of our image to the transform tool. And you can see we need some adjustment here and we can check with another image and the same problem is happening. We need another transform tool between the existing media and transform tool. So select the media and add another transform tool. And now we can use this transform tool to adjust the position of our media. For the first image, we don't need the second transform tool. We can directly connect our media to the transform tool. So let's try to connect to the this image and adjust the transformation setting. We can change center or size value to match with our expectation. And you can understand that how quickly we can change the default media to any media. And this is the power of Fusion Node Graph. So far we have worked with image let's try to bring a video and try to add the video to the eye again we know that we need another transform tool to adjust the position of the video so i'm going to add one connect the transform tool output to the our previous transform tool and then adjust the center position and size to the second transform tool so that the video looks good. We can actually do a lot more thing with the node tools. Let's add a glow after the corner position. For this case, I'm going to just increase the size and lower the glow. Once we are happy, we can press Shift 4 to go to the edit panel. Now let's talk about another important topics which is color correction to the fusion composition. If you now navigate to the color page and try to adjust the color, you can see the color is affecting the whole composition, not just our animation or just the eye. It is affecting the whole media. In some cases, we might need to adjust the color of the graphics separately from the eye. So let me show you how you can achieve that. Press shift 4 to navigate to the edit mode. Press and hold Alter key and drag the clip to duplicate the fusion composition. So now we have two fusion composition. Right click on the fusion composition and from the context menu, press reset fusion composition. This will reset the fusion composition and bring back our original footage. So now we have one footage and one fusion composition. Navigate to the second fusion composition by pressing shift 5 or you can use the navigation pen too. Now we are going to separate our graphics animation from the original footage. Add the channel boolean tool and change the operation type to subtract. Connect the media 1 output to channel boolean background input. Then channel boolean output to tracker input. And by doing this, we have successfully separated our graphics from the original footers. You can disable and enable the channel boolean tool and check the result. Now press shift 4 to navigate to the edit panel. 
now select the fusion composition and navigate to the color page now the color page setting will be only applied to the composition again if you navigate to the fusion composition again and disable the channel boolean the color setting that we have done the color configuration that we have done on the color page will be affected to the whole composition i'm going to enable the color boolean now i can drag the fusion composition on the top of the video footage so that we have two layers the bottom layer contain the original video and the top layer contain the graphics only so now we, we can navigate to the color page and do color correction separately Once the color is adjusted, let's let me get to the edit panel and I can notice the graphic is not looking good here. So let's select the fusion composition, navigate to the composite setting and change the composition mode to add. I think the color is looking very bad. So let me quickly navigate to the color page and reset the color. I think we can slightly offset the global color to the bluish tone and for the graphics i think warm tone is good uh, it can be blue too but for this case let's just select the orange one and you can see our graphics is done and i think that is all for today thank you for staying with me this long and I think this tutorial should help you to get more control over your fusion composition. Thank you and good night.